Hey everyone, uh, Taylor here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make the world's best peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you may be thinking to yourself, hey Taylor, I've been making PB&J since I was got out of the crib, and I'm telling you right now, you haven't been making them the right way. So I'm going to show you right now, today, at this very moment, how to make peanut butter and jelly sandwich, essentially. Um, first thing, you know... Peanut butter is peanut butter. There's obviously better peanut butter than other than other peanut butters. But um, I think, you know, in my opinion, Jiffy Jif has to be uh, the peanut butter you use. One, because it's, it's all American, you know? We want to get out of this recession. We have to buy American products, all right? Next thing, this is um, the jelly is the most important part, period. Um, so I use Smucker Strawberry Jam. Um, if you, th if you use anything else, I feel sorry for you because you're just not, you're not, you're not getting the full experience of what a peanut butter and jelly is supposed to be. Uh, we got our white bread, you know. For peanut butter and jellies, I think the bread's very important also. I use white bread for my peanut butter and jellies just because, um, Just because white bread is just really the best way to go. So you're going to whip out your white bread. Throw it right there on the counter. Make sure to put the rest of your bread away. We put mine in the fridge. Just um, keep the bread fresh. I recommend you do that too. Get yourself a nice little butter knife. All right. All right. There we go. Set this up. There we are. All right. So you have your bread, you got your PB, and you got your J. I like to start off with the PB, just to get a good good foundation going on your bread. I'm kind of spreading this. Make sure to spread it real evenly across all the corners, because you don't want a dry corner. Those are the worst. Dry corners are the worst. So we get it nice and golden all the way around the edges. Excuse me. There goes my alarm. <laughs> um, you can put a lot on. You can put a little on. I like to put like a good medium amount on, just enough to kind of coat coat the whole the whole piece of bread evenly and get a nice little layer going. So I put on about two coats. This is an art. So I mean, if you're not going to get it the first time you try. So don't be sad, you know, if, if your PB&Js don't look like mine. You know, I've been doing this for years, so. Next thing up is the jelly. This part, very important. The one mistake I see amateurs, PB&J amateurs make, is way too much jelly. So you gotta get the peanut butter off the knife first. You don't want peanut butter in your jelly, period. It's just nasty. You got your jelly. Here's what I do. Instead of trying to scoop out tons, you just let it you let it fall out. You let it fall out onto the bread. And stick with a good amount. That's how much I put on there without spreading it. So when you spread it up, you want it to look like glass, like a piece of candy glass on your bread. And once again, you know, you have to use Smuckers. Um, you can use Squeezables. Um, I don't highly recommend it because Squeezables are just nasty to me. Um, anything that comes out of a plastic Squeezable, especially my jelly, because jelly is one of my favorite things to eat. So look how that looks. Well, it looks like glass. See the shimmer on it. That right there is a perfect spread for peanut butter and jelly. You know, once again, don't be, don't be sad if the one you make after watching this video isn't what, you know, what you saw in mine. Just because, you know, I've, once again, I've been doing this for years. I'm you know, a PhD in PH and PBH, so there you go. You have your PB and J. I'm saving this one for later. 
So I'm going to put it in the bag. Peace out.